What's up guys, welcome back to the eCore Academy eLearning platform today. My name is AJ Raj, back with yet another geometry course video for you guys. And before we get into this video, please make sure to smash that subscribe button down below, hit that like button on this video, as well as hitting that post notification bell to get notified on any of our channel's latest posts at eCore Academy. All right, today's lesson's topic is all about inductive and deductive reasoning. If you haven't already, please check out my previous video, which is about reasoning, geometric reasoning specifically, and it goes over the basis of reasoning, reasoning statements, conditional statements, and a lot of really good examples of how it's used in geometric processes. So please watch that video before you view this one, because this video here goes into um, very specifics, uh, two major types of reasoning that you're going to come across in geometry, and we're going to compare them. So we're going to discover the difference and figure out how to apply each one of the geometric process, each one of these reasoning reasoning statements, reasoning types, to geometric processes, and those are inductive and deductive reasoning. And if you, if you, just to give you a little recap, reasoning is a form of taking a certain statement, a certain observation that you are come across, any process, step, statement, equation that you come across in geometry, what you do is you observe that statement, you form a hypothesis on that statement, and then you form a final conclusion for it. So say, for example, if you were given two parallel lines, and you wanted to prove that those two lines are parallel, and you wanted to discover properties to give a generic conclusion for all types of parallel lines. So what you could do is you could start from a specific observation by looking at those two parallel lines, and if you're given that they are parallel, then you have to discover or absorb uh, the information, you have to observe whether or not um, they have similar properties. And the one similar property that parallel lines have is that they have the same exact slope. And Basically, what you can do is you take that specific observation and you can take multiple examples, multiple scenarios, and use those ge generic examples to prove your statement. And what you can say is that if two lines have the same slope, then they are parallel. So you're taking your observed um, focus and then you're making a conclusion based off of that that applies for futuristic um, examples, situations, and statements. All right, let's get right into um, this lesson right here. So for, before we get into the, uh, you know, the meat of inductive and deductive reasoning and the process that they're used and how they're different, um, we have to first discover what they are and what really gives them those differential properties. So inductive reasoning, as stated here, it takes a specific observation and produces a much more general conclusion. So like I said, reasoning is when you take an observation, you basically um, argue it in your head or you formulate your own um, consensus or your hypothesis, and then you make a conclusion that applies to any other uh, futuristic um, steps or um, uh, situations and scenarios. And this basically what it does is it looks at a specific observation and it produces a very general conclusion. And just by looking at this, you can tell that this form of reasoning is often known to be incorrect and too generic when it comes to its conclusions. You need a larger experimentational input for an accurate and specific output. So what I mean by that is, say for example, you're given you know, the task of discovering whether or not all frogs have four legs. You know, and we know most likely that not all frogs have four legs. It's they could have, you know, an extra leg because of a birth defect, or they could have lost a leg due to some sort of external force that, you know, caused them to lose it, and also a birth defect. But we know that generally frogs have four legs. But if we take an example here, if we take a specific observation, and say, for example, we only look at one single frog. And we observe that it does have four legs, four full proper legs. And basically, you cannot take that specific observation saying that only by looking at one random frog that you chose, that all frogs have four legs. Because you're taking a very specific input and then you're having a very general output. It should be the complete opposite. You should have tested, you should have tested very various amounts of frogs or like many frogs, various amounts of them, or what you could have done is you could have taken a smaller output for us, which is your conclusion. You could have um, lessened your conclusion with its generality, and you could have made your, your observation much, more, um, much less specific, and it could have been much less uh, select and could have been larger select force. And what you could have done is you could have made your output much, much 
more specific in order to make it much more accurate, much more larger, much larger chance of being accurate. And even though um, when you're using a proper form of reasoning, it might not always be correct, but it has to be for most of the time. And then right here we have deductive reasoning, which is basically the complete opposite of inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is a type of reasoning that uses previously proven or accepted properties to reach conclusions. And it's complete opposite because it's much more specific and accurate as um, it is the only one that will be relied on in geometry because of the fact that it takes a very generic observation, meaning that you have a much larger experimentational force, but you have a very specific and very... Um, uh, keen and accurate um, output, which is your conclusion. It's much more specific, which gives it a much higher uh, probability of being correct. And it's a type of reasoning that basically uses proven or accepted properties to reach conclusion. So what it does is it takes um, basically the components of geometry, these different properties such as, um, you know, parallel lines, like I said, that's already something that's proven. So you're using proof that is already um, existent, and then you're just using that as part of your reasoning. So it's, it's always going to be accurate in the case of deductive reasoning. All right, let's move on. So let's look at deductive reasoning. Right now, I'm going to actually not, we're not going to look at inductive reasoning at all because it's not what you're going to be using in geometry, as deductive reasoning is what you're going to be using all throughout your geometry course, especially on um, our playlist here for uh, our YouTube channel. And so we're just going to focus on deductive reasoning and all of its components and the laws of deductive reasoning. All right, let's get right into it. So components of deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is used as proof for any geometric process as, as it is always correct because it takes already proven or accepted properties and it uses it as its own components. And this observational or an experimental process is where conclusions are drawn for, from. So basically what you do is you're taking a generic um, input, which is your hypothesis and your observation, and you're coming out with a very specific and accurate conclusion. And deductive reasoning is much more specific because it moves from general to specific. And this is a tool for proof reason, uh, and reasoning, unlike observations and experimentation. So if you were trying to prove a, cer a certain theorem or a certain equation in geometry, which you will have to in every single circumstance, because you need to have a backup for it, uh, some sort of proof or reasoning. Um, deductive reasoning is the only is the most accurate way that you're going to use um, proof for any geometric process, and you cannot use like accurate like measurements or you know experimentations or observations because you don't know whether or not they're accurate yet. But deductive reasoning already is accurate, so you might as well use that. And uh, this is our part two of components of deductive reasoning. And deductive reasoning is often correlated with the law, with law being um, the law process, the ju judiciary process especially, as it combines three different aspects. So if you're a lawyer, you probably might already know this. You know, if your parents are lawyers, you probably are aware of this. And these three parts of a reasoning process using deductive reasoning will be carried out when discovering part proof of a process or develop material for futuristic reasoning. So these are the three parts are the argument, the premises, the premise or the premises and the uh, conclusion. You're most likely going to have multiple premises and I'll get into that. So let's start off with the argument. The argument is a set of statements called premises that are used to create a conclusion. So the argument part in a whole law, um, in the whole judiciary or law process is the argument, uh, is the whole process in the uh, computational part of any problem. If you're looking at a geometric, if a geometric standpoint, or if you're looking at real life, it is the middle ground in which decisions are being processed. So basically what you're doing is in a, pro in a problem, if you're putting it in terms of your hypothesis or what you're given, your premise, your argument and then your conclusion, what uh, the problem that's given to you, the situation that's given to you for, for you to solve in a ge geometric um, problem is actually your input, your premise. So you're taking that as if it were true and you're trying to solve that. So the solving part, the calculation part is the argument and then your final answer that you put out, lay out at the end of the problem is your conclusion as the conclusion most likely will come at the end. And then you have your premises, which are statements that is that premises or premise, uh, a statement that is presumed to be a to be true in the course of a large logical argument. And premises are based off of observational standards, as they are what set the precedent of an argument. 
and what affect the conclusion. So premises actually go against the laws of reasoning, but it is actually assumed to be true because remember deductive reasoning takes um, our, uh, parts or proofs or um, previously proven uh, scenarios and equations and steps, and it takes that as part of its own reasoning, part of its process. As Although premises are assumed to be true, they are technically true in the course of logical arguments, as well as in logical computational forces of geometry. And then, of course, you have your last part of the deductive reasoning components, which is your conclusion. And in an argument, the answer that is reached at the end of the statement of the premises. So basically, the argument is a statement of the premises, and it's the argument going back and forth. It's a middle ground deciding process. And this is the same as a conditional statement where you finally come up to a conclusion, your final answer. Say, for example, someone's accused of doing a certain crime, and they go to court and the lawyers fight it out. The judge will, judge will actually come and represent the conclusion by saying whether or not they're found guilty, guilty or innocent. And then finally, we have our laws of deductive reasoning. These are uh, principles of deductive reasoning. These aren't parts of them. This is a part, this is very important because all parts of deductive reasoning have to follow this format. So the law of still have to be under, sorry, not necessarily this format, but they have to be under either one of these two laws. They have to follow either one of these two laws. And the laws of syllog law of sil syllogism is our first one, and then the law of detachment is the second one. The law of syllogism is a logical argument that always contains two premises and the conclusion. The pr premises and the conclusion have the following form. If A, then B. If B, then C. Conclusion. If A, then C. All right, I'm going to break that apart. I just, uh, you know, just sh shot it out at you, but I'll just break that down. If you're given a value or you're given a, a statement A, someone saying a, a premise is A, which is like a statement or it can be a value in ge ge geometric uh, a relation. So if you're saying that if A, so let's say that it's a number, if A, then B, meaning that if A causes B, or if A is equivalent to B, and if B is equivalent to C, then A must be equivalent to C. So this law of deductive reasoning is very similar to the transitive property of con congruence. And basically what that means is the law of syllogism is saying that if one, if A or one value is equivalent to another value, being, meaning B, and if C is equivalent to that same value, then that means that those two values that are equivalent to the same value must also be equivalent. And then you have the law of detachment, which is an argument that has two true premises and a valid conclusion. The premises and conclusion have the following form. If A, then B. If A is true, therefore B is true. So what that's saying is that the premise is basically your independent variable, your X. And basically what that's saying is if your hypothesis is true, if A is true, then your conclusion must be true. So if, if you have an independent variable, if you're putting this into terms of, you know, variables in math, mathematics and geometry, uh, your independent variable would be your premise or your X, uh, X value. And then your conclusion would be your dependent variable Y because your conclusion depends on the premise and the premise will decide the outcome of the conclusion. And just as a side note, geometry is based off of valid proofs and arguments, which are formal proofs. And deductive reasoning is actually very um, popular as a proof statement. It's used often to prove other um, scenarios because it takes proofs and takes properties that are already proven, and then it basically expands off of them. So this is a pop popular form of proof, but I don't want you to get confused between reasoning and proof because they're two separate concepts, but reasoning can be used as a form of proof. So that'll be it, guys. Um, thank you for tuning into eCore Academy, our e-learning platform. And please make sure to like and subscribe down below. Hit that bell to get notified on any of our channel's latest posts. Visit our website at ecoreacademy.org to get unlocked access to any of our worksheets, note sheets, and integrated quizzes that go along with each and every um, every single video that's posted on our YouTube channel. It's all organized under each and every separate course. And please visit all of our socials at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, and you can email us at our Gmail at ecoreacademy at gmail.com if you have any questions or if you just want to reach out. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in. It's been AJ Raj. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace. Yeah.